one-third of the Earth's largest groundwater basins are rapidly being depleted. These are groundwater storage trends for the Earth's 37 largest aquifers from a UCI-led study using NASA GRACE data from the years 2003 through 2013. Of these, 21 have exceeded sustainability tipping points and are being depleted with 13 considered significantly distressed, threatening regional water security and resilience. The research team, which included co-authors from NASA, the National Center for Atmospheric Research, National Taiwan University, and UC Santa Barbara, found that the Arabian aquifer system, an important water source for more than 600 million people, is the most overstressed in the world. The Indus Basin aquifer of northwest India and Pakistan is the second most overstressed, and the Mazurk Dajo Basin in North Africa is the third. California's Central Valley, used heavily for agriculture and suffering rapid depletion, was slightly better off, but was still labeled highly stressed in the first study. Scientists conclude that the total remaining volume of the world's usable groundwater is poorly known, with estimates that often vary wildly. The total groundwater volume is likely far less than rudimentary estimates made decades ago by comparing their satellite-derived groundwater loss rates to what little data exists on groundwater availability. The researchers found major discrepancies in projected time to depletion. In the overstressed Northwest Sahara aquifer system, for example, time to depletion estimates varied between 10 years and 21,000 years. We don't actually know how much is stored in each of these aquifers. Estimates of remaining storage might vary from decades to millennia, says Andrea Ritchie, head author of both studies. In a water scarce society, we can no longer tolerate this level of uncertainty, especially when groundwater is disappearing so rapidly. The study notes that the dearth of the groundwater is already leading to significant ecological damage, including depleted rivers, declining water quality, and subsiding land. Groundwater aquifers are typically located in soils or deeper rock layers beneath the Earth's surface. The depth and thickness of many large aquifers make it tough to car and costly to drill or otherwise reach bedrock to understand where the moisture bottoms out. But it has to be done, the authors say. Meanwhile, the world's water rights are being bought up. A disturbing trend in the water sector is accelerating worldwide. The new water barons the Wall Street banks and elitist multi-billionaires are buying up water all over the world at an unprecedented pace. They are consolidating their control over water as a growing population stressed the world's food and water supplies. These corporations and investors in wealthy countries are buying up foreign farmland and the fresh water. From the Sudan to Indonesia, most of the land lies in poverty-stricken regions. So experts warn that this widespread purchasing could expand the gap between developed and developing countries. The water grabbing by corporations amounts to 454 billion cubic meters per year globally, according to a new study by environmental scientists. That's about 5% of the water the world uses annually. So who is buying the water? Most of the international land deals involve a tangle of different corporations and partnerships. A handful of the purchasers are countries. But most are investment firms, biofuel producers, or large-scale farming operations. Closely mirroring the top water grabbers, the top five countries by the amount of land purchased since the year 2000 were the United States, Malaysia, the United Kingdom, China, and the United Arab Emirates, according to land matrix data. U.S. companies have grabbed about 777 million acres since the year 2000. 
The report predicts global water demand will increase 55% by the year 2050 while reserves dwindle. If current usage trends don't change, the world will only have 60% of the water it needs in the year 2030, it said. So what are we to do? As an individual, you cannot fight major corporations with a lot of money. You cannot take the land from them. So what's left to us? I suppose we could put out rain barrels. We could buy big cisterns and try to hold rainwater. But other than that, chances are right now, you pay for the water. And you'll continue to pay for the water, though the prices may go up. It's beginning to look very sad for the individual. And very good for the corporations. As it usually is. Good luck to you.